I would never hurt her. Did you kill Malia? He was like, no, I did not kill her. I would not hurt this little girl. The allegations, uh, those claims of Brittany confronting him about him being gay, and that's sort of what set him off uh, to make him, quote, snap and possibly harm Malia. He said, that is not true at all. He said he is not gay, and he said he didn't do anything to, to harm her. I'm, I'm heartened and I'm relieved that we've been able to find her and bring her home where she belonged instead of on the side of a road where a coward and or one or more persons that are cowards with no soul just dumped her like she's a roadkill somewhere. Besides the mother and father, or stepfather, uh, ex-fiance in this case, um, is anyone else accountable besides Darian Vince and Brittany Bowens? I believe that there's one family member of Darian, who I've already told them who I believe this family member is from my conversations with that particular family member also, that he knew where the body was placed. <laughs>what's up it's Ikemel. how are you guys doing we got a bunch of things to get into clips updates and just a lot to talk about now if you saw in the beginning that was hbd acevedo he was talking about malia we're going to get into some more clips in a bit here and if you saw after that i played that quanell clip which i meant to play yesterday and quanell was saying that not only is darian should be held accountable not only Brittany, but he also says that there is somebody in darian's family that knew about malia's location now comment down below and you let me know who you think it is. I think here that Quanell, with all everything that we know in this case, that I think he's pointing the finger to Joe Vance, the brother, Darian's brother. I think that's who he's pointing the finger. Now, the next clip I'm going to show you, I have a couple of clips to show you regarding Acevedo. And this first one is a small one. And I just thought it was kind of interesting, maybe a little funny or ironic in a way, because he says that we're confident that this is the person that probably killed Malia. Now, Personally, I feel like Darian has some sort of involvement. I don't know to what extent in this case. I feel like he is some way involved in this. But I just think it's kind of funny that he says confident and probably. Like that somehow goes hand in hand. Confident that, that the suspect we had in custody was uh, probably was involved in her, her, in her killing. So this next clip is kind of interesting. This is where a reporter seems to ask Acevedo about Cornell and the confession and the legality, which is one of the things that I was thinking about. Uh, moving forward for justice for Malia, right? Uh, and the way he answers is kind of interesting to me because he kind of really doesn't answer. He says he doesn't really care. But the other thing, too, is that he kind of starts to mutter and stumble over his words a little bit. He just kind of like, I don't know, just reading his body language, which I'm no expert or anything like that, but he seems like he was almost kind of like, well, we already knew that and we already did this and our investigation is thorough. Are you concerned about the legality of what Darion Vance told on LX and whether it'll be allowed to be used in court. Let me tell you me, me something. When he told Quan LX, we already knew who the suspect was. You know, uh, he can, I'm not worried about any of that stuff. That's for the DA to worry about and uh, to deal with. But the truth of the matter is our police department uh, is, has conducted uh, an effective investigation, a thorough investigation, the investigation continues, and we have every intention of bringing charges against those, uh, the person or person responsible for her death, and the person or person responsible for um, trying to conceal her death by dumping her on the side of a highway in Arkansas. So I'm not really sure what to think about that. I mean, I guess, do they feel a little bit kind of, is it an ego thing? Is it kind of like, oh, we're the police and we couldn't get the supposed confession? Or uh, And we're going to talk about that more later, about the confession thing. So stay tuned. But maybe it's like an ego thing because Quanell was able to do it and the police couldn't. Uh, the next clip that I'm going to show you, though, and by the way, I got to say with Acevedo, I totally agree with his description of the cowards, the soulless, empty carcass people that dumped Malia and knew about Malia's location. Now, the next clip, they ask about Brittany Bowens. Check out what he has to say. Look, there's people that are talking about mom and everything else. Let me just tell you, we, our investigation is ongoing. And I'm not going to cast aspersions at anyone other than the person that's charged right now. But uh, suffice it to say, we want to leave no stone unturned. No stone unturned. So I hope that's the case. Now, this last final clip with Acevedo, and then we got a bunch of other stuff to move on to in clips. Uh, he mentions that he spoke to Malia's grandmother. And I just thought it was kind of interesting because he mentions the grandmother and family, but doesn't mention the mother or anybody else, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and sometimes with these things, I guess you have to read between the lines. I don't know if I'm reading in too much, but he doesn't mention talking to 
Brittany or Craig or these other people. I, I've talked to her grandma who just was uh, so burdened by the thought of her, her little granddaughter not being home. And I know that this has brought some relief to that, that grandma and those that loved her. Now, I wanna talk about a couple of things here, okay? Moving on to the next topic. We got Darian Vince's uh, search warrant for his phone, which is great. Houston police investigators have filed a search warrant for Darian Vence's cell phone records. Among other things, it asks for geolocation information. I guess from GPS location to call logs, they want to know who he called before Malaya went missing. They want to search all those records, which is great. And I've heard a couple of people questioning why did it take so long? I'm not sure. I I'm wondering what's the process behind that. But in the next soundbite, we're going to be talking about Quan L because his cell phone got subpoenaed too, his records. And the interesting thing about this is that they're kind of alluding or they're saying that they want to know also if the police sent them in there to talk to Darian. Uh, so I know a lot of people saying that this doesn't matter who cares, but this is the next process. This is the process for the justice of Malia, the whole legal thing in court. You know, it's not just over because she was found. It's a continuation. Now, Vince's defense attorney, Dorian Kotler, has filed a subpoena for Quanell's cell phone records. I think he has to cooperate. KHOU legal expert Gerald Tree says the defense wants to call into question the reported confession Quanell obtained from Vince. Cell phone records could prove if Quanell was sent to talk to Vince by police. And I'm sure the defense lawyer is very upset that that statement was made is why he's attacking the statement. So that's kind of an interesting thing, right? But let me tell you this, right? Common sense to me dictates, right? If Quanell, he seems like a really smart individual. He knows what he's doing. And why would he just have one cell phone, right? He probably has a burner cell phone. So whatever phone they plan to get subpoena records on, I guess good luck with that. The next quick little update is regarding the whole mental assessment check that they ordered, the court or the lawyer or whatever. Uh, and just for you guys so you know, I'm sure they're not going to go for an insanity plea. I'm not sure what's exactly behind this. Kotler isn't answering questions, but the legal maneuvering continues. Today, a court order filed for Vince to undergo a mental health or intellectual disability assessment. So the last final clips, I don't know if you guys knew there was like an extended version of the jailhouse interview with Darian where Chauncey explains a little bit more. I chopped it up and diced it up. I mean, mostly it's everything that we already know. But uh, here he contradicts again Quanell with the whole thing that he wasn't remorseful, that he's actually very emotional about this. Roll it. He heard that people said that he felt no remorse. Mm -hmm. And he says, that's not true. He says, I haven't slept. I haven't eaten. Uh, he says, you know, this has been on, on his mind. Uh, talking about Malia to Darion Vince, um, he was very, very emotional. I'm talking about... Um, you know, tears, uh, he was shaking. Every time I mentioned Malia, or every time he spoke about this little girl, he became uh, more and more emotional. I wanna end up with this final clip where Chauncey was talking about that uh, people can vouch for Darian, his family, his coworkers, and all this stuff. And I'm presenting both sides, multiple sides, because I think it's important to see the contrast and differences. Check it out, let me know what you think. I mean, he was very adamant in, in letting me know how much he loved Malia. He said, you can ask my family members, anyone who knows me, even my coworkers, he said, of course. they will tell you that I love this little girl. I did my best to take care of her. He says, even my coworkers knew sometimes I would call out from work uh, because she was sick or because I had to tend to her. Crazy case, right? And with the update from the beginning that I put in this video where they're gonna get a warrant or they got a warrant for Brittany Bowen's phone records. I think that is awesome. I think that's going to tell so much because she loves to talk to everybody. I think it's going to be very revealing. So if it's true that like what Acevedo said, no stone unturned, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. You know, I'm still not sure about Darian's involvement in this, but let me just say this. You got to stop playing friendly. You got to, these people covering up for each other. Oh, he wants to watch Netflix with his family and Brittany Bowens and posting pictures of this guy. Multiple people are going down because I'm not going to be satisfied until just one person. I want everybody involved to go down. Okay. I'm not satisfied that we just, we found Malia. That's great for the family so they can grieve and whatever closure they need to do. But the people that think that, oh, it's done, <laughs> bruh, this is far from done. This is actually, if you didn't know, I'll tell you right now, this is actually just getting started. This is just the beginning. We're not done.